We shall return to the scriptures. Thank you. Return to 2 Kings. Chapter 3. Verses 11. <clears throat> Second Kings chapter 3, verse 11. Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your word. We pray that you will speak into our lives. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do in us, for us, and through us, Father. Every resistance to the preaching of God's word, we bind them in the name of Jesus, and we proclaim victory. Hallelujah. They overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, and the word of the testimony is your word. And so be it, Father. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Praise God. Good to be in the house of the Lord. We are looking at 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 11, and today's message is titled, The Waterman to Wonder Man. The Waterman to Wonder Man. Praise God. Yep. Waterman to Wonder Man. But Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elijah the son of Shaphat is here who poured water on the hands of Elijah. You know, sometimes... There are people who have nicknames that get stuck to them. Do you know of people with nicknames? Well, at times, our occupation, our weakness, our blunders of life, our flaws of life, as a way of sticking to us that, People tend to remember way after our role in those positions. The Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, people still talk about him. He's the powerful person in India now. They still talk about him and they say that he was the Chai Wala. You know what that means? Yeah, he used to be a tea vendor, okay? Now, the man has moved in life. He was in different powerful positions. He was the chief minister of a very rich state, and from there he's been the prime minister. This is his second term. But people still remember him as a chaiwala. Amazing, right? People who have physical challenges in life, way after they have overcome those challenges, people still identify them with those challenges in life. Sometimes those names, they just stick with us for good. We see what unveils before us this morning is three kings on a campaign. They are out to wage a battle. And they find themselves in a very, very tough situation. In a predicament that only a supernatural intervention can bail them out of it. Sometimes... As powerful as we can be, as resourceful as we can be, as able as we can be, we all can find ourselves in a place where we need a supernatural, a divine intervention to bail us out of those situations. 
We all have gone through it in our lives. Our most powerful moments can become the weakest moments of our life in a nick of a second. Do you remember anyone like that? Samson had just killed literally hundreds of Philistines. And standing at the pinnacle of victory, he cries out to God saying, you have given me this great victory, but now I am going to die of thirst and fall into the hands of this uncircumcised Philistines whom I just beat them. Praise God. What am I saying? Sometimes in our most celebrative moments of life, when we have just climbed the pinnacle of success, you and I can go through seasons in our lives when the very foundations of our lives are shaking. We go through those moments in life to remind us one more time that we are mere human beings who can survive without leaning on God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Those moments are glorious moments because those moments allow us to have a realization as to who we are and how frail we are. Praise God. It tells us that we can survive without him. Praise God. Three kings. A godly man. A pagan man and a backslider. Praise God. Three kings team up and they are going out to war. They find themselves in a place that they realize that all three with their armies are going to be done. And all of a sudden, this man of God, King Jehoshaphat, he looks around and says he's now seeking for advice, seeking for the counsel of the Lord. And that's what we read. But Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And so we come to our text, which brings us the water man that turned into the wonder man. This is years after. Elisha has graduated from being a water man from being a common servant by being an, an intern and a mentee under the great prophet Elijah years later. Now he's accomplished. He has achieved so much. He's widely known as a man of God. He's known as a man who has the word of God. He's known as a man who has the ear of God. He's known as a man who stands in the counsel of God. He's known as a man who hears what's being spoken in the throne room of God. But in a conversation, he's being reminded as a man who poured water in the hands of Elijah. Praise God. Humble beginnings. Praise God. Humble beginnings. Sometimes those names can just stick to us. How do you feel when someone calls you by, by a name that, is, that was unaccomplished? A name that reminds you of your humble beginnings. A title that reminds you of how insignificant you were. How does it, how, what, what comes to your mind? I'll tell you. A real life experience. Years ago, latter part of the 90s, mid 90s, latter part of 90s, we as a, as a team from this church went to Haiti for a mission trip. That was our first mission trip to Haiti. We made multiple trips to Haiti after that. This was our first trip. Everything was new for us. The most, one of the most dangerous places on the face of the earth. As we were there, we were six of us. 
and we were staying in, in a man who had a very big heart. We were sharing rooms. We were staying there. And so when you go as a team, you know, there are seasoned people and there are people who are first comers. There are people who are experienced in life and there are people who are not experienced in life. So one of our most seasoned and experienced persons started picking up on, picking on one of the most junior most young person in our team. And he started playing around with him, joking around with him, teasing him, uh, and, and, and kind of kind of looking down on him. And he started by saying that, hey, you, you are our water boy. Now imagine that. Now, if you are mature in life, and if you are seasoned in life, Perhaps you know how to handle it. Not that it won't touch you. Not that it won't bother you. But you know how to handle it. But when you are a beginner in life, that disturbs you. And this young person was disturbed. I mean, lost the composure. Lost that balance. What do you mean? I'm the water boy. What do you mean I'm the water boy? And on it went between those two. It was like tense moment. And I had to jump in to save the day because I realized that it would go out of hand. What am I trying to say? You know, nobody likes to be called a water boy. Nobody likes to be called a waterman. Nobody likes to be called by their menial titles in life. When it does... It bucks us, it bothers us, it troubles us. Here, Elisha is not in the conversation, but for some reason, he's still remembered as a man who poured water on the hands of Elijah way after he has become an accomplished personality in the land of Israel. Praise God. Humble beginnings. When we start small in life, when God opens small windows of opportunity for us, when God opens small avenues for us, and when we start putting our baby steps and start walking slowly, you never know where those doors can lead you into or what those doors can lead you into. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you remember your early days? All of us have early days unless you are in early part of life, which I believe there is only a few probably here because most of them are on the other side. We all are have, have our early days, praise the Lord. Our starter days, our beginner days. You remember those days? When you do remember those days, what comes through your mind? Praise God. Sometimes it's good for us to walk through those memory lanes. Praise the Lord. When we walk through those memory lanes, it ought to evoke gratitude to the Lord and the ways that God has led each and every one of us. And we can say, Lord, because you were with us, we are here this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, it all unfolds with the call on the life of Elisha. God told Elijah specifically Go and anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, as your successor. Wow. God picks a successor for his man. And he picks them by his name. And make sure that there is no mistake. Because I believe that Elisha was not just a, just a very unique name. It was a common name. 
And so God did not want his man to make a mistake. He said very clearly, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, raise God. Go and anoint him. Praise God. In the economy of God, in the kingdom of God, in the purpose of God, in the projects of God, in anything where God is the king, he appoints people. Praise God. He handpicks people and he puts them in place because God knows the end from the beginning. God can see beneath the facade. God can see into our hearts. God can gauge the thoughts of a heart. God can gauge the emotional up and downs of our lives. God knows us as we are. Praise God. God tells Elijah, go. The Bible says, God, Elijah goes and he finds Elisha plowing the field, and he throws his mantle on him, and he walks away. Praise God. The call. Praise God. The call of God is very important. Praise God. The calling of God is very important. The Bible teaches us, the New Testament saints, his calling is a high calling. Praise God. His calling is a high calling. Praise God. It's a high calling because God himself he is high. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when he calls someone, he calls us into that high calling. The Bible teaches that our calling is a holy calling. Praise God. High calling, we like it, but it is also a holy calling. Praise God. Hallelujah. We can't miss that. You can't miss that. You can't forget that. As high our calling is, it is also a holy calling. And God expects us to live up to that high and holy calling. The Bible teaches that it is a heavenly calling. Praise God. It is a heavenly calling. They are, our calling is unique. It is also a unique calling. Praise the Lord. What is a unique calling? What it means is God has called every one of us, praise God, with an intent and a purpose and a design. Praise the Lord. When he took takes a person... Peter Samuel, God has a niche, praise God, where Peter Samuel alone can fit and function, praise God. Likewise, everyone who's listening to me this morning, you have a very unique calling, praise God. You and I need to know our calling and we need to align ourselves to that calling and we need to yield ourselves to that calling and when we willingly submit ourselves to that calling, God's program is initiated in us. Praise God. The purpose of God starts unveiling for us when we align ourselves into that unique call that God has placed in our lives. Praise God. We function the best. We are effective the best. We reach our up ability when we align ourselves to what God wants us to do. Praise God. We can become ineffective, impotent. Praise God. 
when we put ourselves anywhere else than what God wants us to. Praise God. So God calls this man. Elijah comes, throws a mantle on him, and he walks away. And the scripture gives us, it's recorded in 1 Kings. The scripture gives us insight into what kind of a man this man was. He was, he was an affluent man. The Bible says he was plowing his field and he was the twelfth, he was, he was manning the twelfth yoke of oxen. The twelfth one. In other words, there were eleven pairs of oxen before him and he was the twelfth one that was plowing the, the field. Imagine that. He comes from a very rich family. It's not just one pair of oxen. That's 12 pair of oxen. When you think about, when you read the Old Testament, we, can, we need to understand, we need to have a modern day picture also. Imagine you have such an expanse of land that you, have, you need to have at least 12 tractors to man your field. That's how rich this man was. This guy was rich. And he's from an affluent family, but he was a worker as well. Normally, when you are born with a silver spoon in your mouth, you become what? You become lazy and lethargic. Not everybody, but most people do. But this man, he was one who worked very hard. Praise the Lord. Very hard. He was like one of those laborers in the field. Praise God. You know, God is looking for people who are hard workers. Don't ever think that being in the economy of God, we can be idle and not be doing things for him. God is always looking for people who are actively working in their secular field. Praise God. Matthew was a tax collector. The man was actively working, raising funds for the Romans. Peter and the other disciples, Andrew and the John Zebedee brothers, they were fishermen. Fishermen were known to be hard workers. God is looking for people who are working hard because he wants your, your kind of work ethos, work ethics to be used in the kingdom of God. Praise God. A hard worker God picked up. And the Bible says this man, as soon as he had the call of God upon his life, you know what he did? The first thing that he did was he took his oxen, he slaughtered them, sacrificed them, used his equipment, the tools that he was using. He burned it up, he offered a sacrifice, and he, and he gave a farewell meal to everyone. Wow. What kind of commitment? Praise God. In other words, when the call came upon him, he was sold out to the call. Praise God. Sold out to the call. Are you sold out to whatever you are doing for the Lord? Regardless of what it is, mind you, this man is known as the person who poured water on Elijah's hand. From being a landlord, from being a very affluent person, you and I would think that he's inducted into fame, he's inducted into a great, powerful, popular ministry. No, he's inducted to servanthood. Wow. What does he do? The first thing is that he bids farewell to everything that he has. Praise the Lord. He makes a commitment that he will be sold out to the cause. Can you be sold out to the cause that God is calling you out to? 
That's the kind of people God is looking for. People who are sold out to the cause of Jesus Christ, regardless of what your niche is, regardless of what your status is, regardless of what your standing is, regardless of what your position is, leave it to the Lord. You never know how far, how high God can take you. But God is looking for someone who's sold out. When God looked at this man, he saw in his heart what? He was a man who worked. He was a man who had a commitment. Praise God. You and I can only see pictures about people after the fact. But when God looks into someone's heart, he knows who we are. Praise God. And all what we do is we just play it out. Praise God. What a depth of commitment. From there, what do you see? His consecration. The humility is already seen. As a boss, he could have been the first guy who was plowing the field. But he's behind everybody else. Shows his humility. No wonder he had no issue to start as a water man, as a man who was willing to wash the hands of the prophet that he was working under. He had no issue. Because as affluent he was, as wealthy he was, he had a heart of a servant. Praise God. Hallelujah. Humility. Humility can take us to places where we cannot even imagine how, how high God can take us. Praise the Lord. Next we see about him is his consecration. What about his consecration? Throughout his life, this man was consecrated. Consecration is very important for a man, a woman of God that God has called. We said that it's a holy calling. Holy calling meaning that you and I are called to exhibit the holiness of God in our arena of ministry. Praise God. Consecration. Throughout his life you see his consecration being revealed. When the commander of the Syrian army came and when he got healed and when he's going back, the man wanted to bless this prophet. And Elisha says, nothing doing. I can't touch that which is, that which belongs to you. His life is consecrated to the Lord. Praise God. As we start small in our life, praise God. Always remember, if you are in any service for the Lord, consecration is important from the beginning stage to wherever God will take you. Every step you remember, we ought to remember that we are consecrated to the Lord. You and I cannot become anything and everything that the world wants us to become. The world is constantly striving to make us fit into the worldly mold. When the world is trying to make us fit into the worldly mold, you and I ought to resist that by trusting in the grace of God, by leaning on the power of the Holy Spirit, by banking on the word of God. You and I have to retain the consecration. Praise God. Sometimes... As time goes on and, and as, 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 as God changes the setting for us, we forget what our consecration is. Praise God. There are many men and women of God who have forgotten their consecration. They end up in history with a different kind of story. Our story 
ought to be and is linked to his story. Praise God. Whenever my story and your story is linked to his story, that's a success story. When we alienate ourselves from his story, when we break the link by compromising our consecration to the lordship of Jesus, to the cause of Jesus Christ, to the standards of God's word, to the holy calling that God has called us our story changes us and our story gets mingled our story gets muddied by the things of the world but Elisha was consecrated praise the Lord hallelujah praise God hallelujah the man who was consecrated praise God hallelujah His calling starts by being inducted into support ministry. In other words, different kinds of ministry. If you're in a church, you know, you look at our church, there are so many kinds of ministry in the church. And most of us would start with support ministry. You know what support ministry is? Playing the second fiddle. Playing the second fiddle. That's support ministry. And all over the place you will see people who are doing support ministry. That's not because they are least. That's not because they are small. Praise the Lord. It's part of servanthood. Praise God. It's part of servant leadership. It's part of starting slow. It's part of entering into that first step into ministry. And we see that this man of God, he is in the support ministry. What is his role? The act of pouring water over the man of God's hand to keep his hands clean. <laughs> Praise God. How small can you start? The Bible says, do not despise humble beginnings. You don't despise it and don't let anyone belittle it. If they belittle it, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Praise the Lord. It's okay. You don't know how God repays. You never know. Praise God. Look at Philip. He starts by waiting on the table. Look at Stephen. He starts by waiting on the table. Stephen was not an average man. The Bible says this guy was an orator. This man could, 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 could debate with people. His in-depth knowledge of God's word was such that he, when he spoke, people could not answer him back. Praise God. But do you know where he started? He started on serving tables. How high God can take a person. Praise God. How high God can take a person. Praise God. Wow. Praise God. How far God can take a person. Look into the life of Philip. He's distributing food. He's coming to a place where the system has failed. The system has failed. What was the system? The system was distribution of food. When the distribution of food was being done, they were being biased. And so they had to bring in seven godly men who were filled with the Holy Spirit, who had wisdom and faith. And they come and they start, initiate their ministry, serving food, making sure that everything was done in a fair and a decent manner. But God elevates him to such a degree. Do you know where he started? The issue was the Greek widows were overlooked in the food distribution. And when Philip was faithful in the food distribution, God put him to distribute Spiritual food, where? Among the Samaritans. 
centuries old cultural barrier, centuries old segregation, centuries old people look down and ostracized and forsaken, but God sends his man who was fair in distributing hamburgers and hot dogs to the group of people who were looked away. To serve spiritual meal. To bring the message of kingdom of God. To bring the message that will bring freedom and liberty. And write their names in the Lamb's book of life. My God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes the payoff comes way after. Praise God. Hallelujah. We always want to see the results right away. But let me tell you from the scripture. Sometimes the payoff comes way after. Praise God. Moses was up on the hill and the battle was being waged in the valley against the, against the Amalekites. In Rafidim, I believe. And two people came up to help Moses, Aaron, and her. Praise God. The Bible says. Time passed. Praise God. The man who gave a helping hand. Praise God. The man who was a support ministry guy. Not much is said about him. But the Bible says. God picks one of his posterity and adorns him with skills and the spirit of God to do artistic work. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You never know. You might be doing support ministry in the church and you might be saying, Lord, how long I've been doing this? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. A whole lifetime. Praise God. No recognition. Everybody just ignores. And everybody takes you for granted. And you feel everybody uses you. And nobody applauds you. And nobody appreciates you. But let me remind you. Praise God. There is a bookkeeper up there. He tallies it down. Praise God. He tallies it down. Praise God. Hallelujah. The payday is coming. It will come in a way that you don't expect. Praise God. And when God moves, praise God. It's going to rattle people. It's going to surprise people. It's going to blow people's mind. And you will know. The world will know. It is God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God has a way of doing things. When he does things. When he elevates people. When he exalts people. When he uses people. It's written all over them. G-O-D. Praise God. Hallelujah. Support ministry. A common servant's task. You think of what I've gone through Elisha's head? I was better off. Back home I was better off. I had my own tractor. I called my own shots. I had all these people working under me. Where am I? You know. When he burned those equipment, when he slaughtered those oxes, praise God, he had bid farewell and he had burned this bridge. Praise God, no turning back. Our commitment to the Lordship of Jesus, our commitment to the causes that we are involved in, our commitment to the callings that we are involved in ought to be such that it is not connected to any perks. Let God 
God be the one who gives us the perks? Telling you, when God gives us the perks, it's unmatched. It's not like the credit card reward points. When God gives the perks, it is unmatched. You cannot match it. Nobody can match it. It's beyond your mind. Thank you, Jesus. Serving is a distinguishing mark of a Christian. Every Christian, every believer ought to be involved in serving the Lord and Lord's people. Sometimes we think, well, I want to serve God, but I don't want to serve people. Well, serving God on a visible plane is serving God's people. Or serving people as God directs you to do so. You and I ought to be in a place where we are willing to have that kind of commitment. Why am I saying this is the, this is the beginning of the year? And in a week or two, all our slots, slots are going to be open for ministry. I want everybody in this church, young men, elderly, old men, plug yourself into some kind of ministry. Praise God. If you are not in any ministry and you feel that nobody reached out to you, it's okay. You still come. You will find a slot for you. Praise God. The most humble task becomes stepping stones to greatness in life. Praise God. The most humble task that God gives us that opens before us becomes a stepping stone into greatness. Praise God. You look into the life of Elisha. The water man turns into a wonder man. It's interesting. You know, sometimes God uses the very channel that he initiates us into ministry to get into the depth of ministry. Philip feeding now he's feeding spiritual food. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. You look into the life of Elisha. He starts by pouring water. You think God has a sense of humor? You look into the life of Elisha and his ministry. He starts his ministry by doing what? He takes that mantle that falls upon him. And he does the first thing what he does is he strikes River Jordan and the water splits before him. God says, Elisha, all these years you've been pouring water on the man of God's hand without expecting anything in return. I'm going to initiate your ministry by parting the water before. Praise God. That's why it's important that we don't undermine anything that we do for God. If you're starting in the nursery, you don't know the impact you're going to have in the lives of those children. If you're involved in children's church, you don't know what you're going to imprint into your hearts. Praise God. If you're involved in Sunday school, you don't know what those students can carry from you. I still remember some of my Sunday school teachers. I remember them with gratitude and I give thanks to the Lord for what God has done through them into my life. And I believe that all of us can. If you're involved in, with the young people or young couples, you don't know what a positive influence you can be on them. Sometimes the results are not evident, but eventually it will show up. Wow, look at this man. God used him to heal the poisonous water in a town. God used him to bring up, a, up an iron axe to float in the water. God is using him in the text that we read for the ditches 
the, the, the barren land, the wilderness, God uses him to bring water and fill the ditches. It's like God saying, you know what? You remain faithful in that area. I'll show you what I can do with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at the history. When you look at history, you will see how God has elevated people throughout the history. How the water boys become the wonder boys. Praise the Lord. How the water mans become the water, or the wonder men. Praise God. You know, talk about a dream boy. He becomes the prime minister. Who is he? Praise God. Think about the donkey tracker. He becomes the king. Who is he? Talk about the lion and the bear killer. He becomes the king. Who is he? Praise God. Talk about that illegitimate child born of a prostitute. He becomes a judge. Who is he? Jephthah. Praise God. Think about that orphan girl. All of a sudden she rises up to be a queen of an empire. Who is she? Praise God. Hallelujah. Think about that slave boy who becomes a statesman in Babylon. Who is he? Daniel. Praise God. Think about the, the, the illiterate fishers of men, fishermen who became fishers of men. Who are they? The disciples of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, think about our nation. The farm boy in the Carolinas, Billy Graham. Praise God. Think about the cycle evangelist who traveled on cycle in Africa. He became later on known as a globe-trotting evangelist, Renard Bonke. Praise God. Can you write your name there? And you look at your name and you see I'm still insignificant. That's okay. You know what? God can do a wonder for you. Praise God. People might still look at you and say, hey, I know you. I know you. I remember that old thing about you. Praise God. Let them say what they have to say. But when God does a work in you, praise God, you will become the talk of the town. Praise God. When people go through problems in their life, they will remember your name. They will say, you have a solution. Maybe we should reach out to you. You can help us. You have the word of God. You have the counsel of God. You have the divine wisdom. You have that divine knowledge. You have the skill from above. There is something unique in you. Whoa. Praise God. Hallelujah. Where is God asking you to pour water this, this morning? Can you ask the Lord, Lord, where do you want me to pour water? Where do you want me to be a support minister? Where do you want me to be an assistant where do you want me to lend my helping hand? Where do you want me to give my shoulders? You know, there was a group of people in the Old Testament. They lend their shoulders. You know, for what? Carry the ark. Praise God. When you carry the ark... These guys were in the middle of River Jordan, standing, stand still, holding the ark. Everybody's passing by. Everybody's looking at them and passing by. Some, as they're passing by, they, 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 they are smirking at them, saying, We're going, we're going. 
they're going, they don't realize that these guys are in the, in the middle of the, of, of, of the river holding the ark. That's why God has put them there. And that's the reason that these guys are safe and they are walking past. They are walking past. They are walking past. Everybody is gone. Do you know, God did not forget those guys who were holding the ark. When you give your shoulders to Jesus for the cause of the gospel, praise God, it will leave a mark on your shoulders. Praise God. Let me tell you, those scars, those marks are going to turn into stars on your shoulders. Because God doesn't overlook your labor of love, your sweat, your tears, your work for God. He doesn't overlook. <laughs> Praise God. How often we want anointing to be poured on our heads. We all want, I want it too. But sometimes before the anointing is poured on our heads. God calls us to pour water on hands. Praise God. Do it without ceasing. Do it without hesitancy. Do it wholeheartedly. Do it do not without expecting rewards. Do it spontaneously. Do it out of love. Do it out of commitment. Do it out of your consecration. Do it because God calls you to do it. Do it because he has called you with a high calling. Praise God. Hallelujah. As we open up different ministries... Where we want men and women of God to serve. As you are reached out, how would you respond? Would you say, give me a picture? I am willing, I am here. I will take the picture that the Lord puts on my hand. I'll take the assignment that the Lord gives me. No matter how insignificant it is. And through the course, I will keep my commitment. I'll keep my consecration. Praise God. Without bailing out in the middle. Without calling it quits in the middle. Without throwing in the towel in the middle. Praise God. Lord, I will keep that commitment that I make. All eyes closed. Who wants to make a commitment this morning? Lord, whatever picture that you entrust me this year, regardless of its size, regardless of its glamour, regardless of its glory, regardless of its measurement, my hands are available, Lord. My hands are available. You can put that on my hands. Lord, you want my shoulder? I give my shoulder to you. Lord, I give my shoulder to you. You want me to carry the ark? You want me to bear that burden? You want me to bear that task. My shoulder is available. If you are that person. I want you to stretch your hands towards him. As a sign telling him. Lord, whatever you are going to entrust in my hands. My hands are available. Go ahead, Lord. Download it 
on my hands. Unload it on my shoulders. Download it in my heart. Download it in my mind. What is it that you want me to do? I'm available. When the story is written, years later, even if they call me a water man, a water boy, only a servant, only a support minister, Lord, I bank on your faithfulness. Because your faithfulness rolls down from one generation to another. It's never over with us. It's never over with us. Because you are an eternal God. And you are our dwelling place from one generation to another. Yeah, stretch your hands. Only if you are saying, as a sign of your commitment, whatever you entrust me in my hand, I will take it. I'll receive it. I commit with a consecration. Lord, we commit ourselves into your hands. Do a greater work in us. Use us any way that you want. We are at your disposal. We are at your disposal. The world will use us and dispose us. But when we are at your disposal, praise God, only the best is in store for us. In Jesus' name, amen.